That's very good, isn't it? I like Howl. that. It's got a kind of 60s feel to it. Birds, Beach Boys, that kind of West Coast sound. Yes, indeed. And they're Irish, are they? They're Irish. H-A-L. Howl. I wonder why the Irish bands had that kind of thing. The Phils have a similar sort of... Yeah, sort of thing. West Coast feel, yeah. yeah. All right, never mind that. We've got Paul Kay here with us. Paul, good morning. Good morning, Jonathan. Isn't it lovely to have Paul back on the show, Andy? It is, yeah. Uh, you look dishevelled, but handsome. <laughs> <laughs> he's one of those men who only actually really looks good dishevelled. When you put him in a suit, I think he'd probably look a bit a bit arch. Yeah. I still look dishevelled in a suit. Yeah, do you? I think, yeah, I imagine you do, because your hair's all tufty and stuff, isn't it? It's just naturally tufty. Yeah, you're t a tufty fella. I, that's what I am. <laughs> Have you ever slicked your back? Never. Oh, actually, yeah, when I had a bit more, I used to slick it back. <laughs> well, you're, it's, is it going? It's going. Yeah, but it's going discreetly. There's a penalty spot around the yeah, back. If it's going discreetly, who complains? Yeah. Well, no one really is. As long as it doesn't go overnight like that. I've started wearing a lot more hats. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all for the hat. I just saw your hat. Yeah, I love beautiful. it. You look one like of, a little Britain character. One of many. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, I think I'm, I'm growing into myself like that. Um... Paul is here because, well, I think you're know, mainly here because you've got the movie coming out this summer. I'm not quite sure when it's released. I've got it here, actually, May 27th. May 27th. Uh, but also there's a Dennis Penis compilation out. Penis from Heaven, Were yeah. Are you aware of this? I, well, I've been writing letters to the to the Beeb for a couple of years to try and get it to happen because yeah. it seems like everything's coming out on DVD, so... Well, also, and there's a real... I mean, I was really, you know, quite excited to see this because I can remember seeing... I don't think I saw all of the appearances you made because what was that show you were on? It was, it was on the Sunday show. Yeah, which was... And it had Peter Kay on as well sometimes, didn't it? Um, no, I don't think it had Peter Kay. It had, uh, who the hell did I have it on? It was Donna McPhail. Yep. Uh, Katie Puckrick. Oh, wow. They were the presenters. Blimey, doesn't that immediately date it? <laughs> that, that really is. That's God bless her. It was proper hangover TV. <laughs> I remember it. Um, but I, I really don't think I saw everyone, so therefore I'm very pleased it's out on DVD so I can see it and see the ones I missed because there were some very funny encounters you had with some of the more famous folk on the planet. I did have a few encounters. Yeah, and it was a great look you had as Dennis Penis. Well, it was Woody Rotten. Yeah, so it's a sort of Johnny Rotten <laughs> meets Woody Allen. Um, the glasses, have you still got those? That you I want? have got the glasses. You've got to save them. They'll go and play in Hollywood one day. They might, I yeah. doubt it very much. Um, but you must have upset quite a lot of people, though, I imagine, when you did that. I mean, there, there, were, there was an encounter with Kevin Costner that sort of drags on to the point where it almost becomes painful. Yeah, I made his life. Well, the beauty of the Venice Film Festival is that you could actually leave a premiere and get to the... the, the uh, the film star's hotel before they got back. It's only like a, a few hundred yards. So <laughs> just he's just little, running up and just down, a boat, winding boat him up. Skip a hop. But uh, yeah, he called me a low-budget guy, which I'm still very proud. Well, of. Actually, it's quite a restrained insult, though, isn't it? Well, I'm not allowed to say what else he told me. Oh, I see. Yeah. So he <laughs> said some stuff off camera. <laughs> he certainly did. All right, uh, but it really, it's acting you do now, isn't it? I mean, it's not it know, is. this sort of comedy. This weird kind of um, anarchic guerrilla comedy that's behind you. Now. Well, funny, the film is is very, was very guerrilla. It was a it was. Uh, guerrilla style filmmaking we went to Ibiza with a low budget um, came back with 70 hours and that was really winging it and going into the clubs and trying to find five minutes and to, to get onto the decks and uh, thankfully the DJs were were very helpful and they let us you know they, they carry on and I take all the credit because you you play a DJ in the film I play a DJ Frankie Wilde who, who uh, goes deaf he goes slowly deaf throughout the course of the movie yeah. It's it's one of the worst titles for film I think I've ever seen. <laughs> it's All Gone Pete Tong. Is, <laughs> is it? I mean, it's quite amusing, I suppose, but uh, presumably they've already got a, an alternative title lined up for the for the US. No, I think, well, I think the US, <laughs> they're relying on the fact that it, they don't know maybe who he is, so it sounds a bit like, oh, you know, Who's Afraid that. of Virginia Woolf. It it's sounds a bit more Pete sophisticated. Tong. <laughs> <laughs> who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, and It's All Gone Pete Tong. What a double bill that would be, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> a deaf DJ. <laughs> yeah. um, but I've heard, I, sadly I haven't seen it, as I said, they sent me over a copy um, a bit late yesterday for me to get to watch it. But uh, a friend of mine saw it, he was raving about it. And when I saw it, I thought, oh, it just, the title just put me off a little bit. And I thought, I'm not going to like this. He is absolutely, you know, raving about it, says so it's fantastic. So it seems like you, you you potentially got a hit on your hands. It's exciting. I mean, it's, um, yeah, well, we won Best Film out of the Toronto Film Festival and picked up another couple of awards in Aspen at the HBO comedy thing. Um, so there's a real momentum behind it. It comes out in New York next week. And it's um, it's a comedy, mainly. It's a, yeah, it's a black comedy, okay. I would say. Uh, the music in it, is it the modern bang, 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 ravey music? Yeah, it is. But, they, but there's, you know, the Beach Boys, a lot of uh, better Good. bands Good. and that sort of... So it's the, a bit more eclectic. Uh, than... Is it the better band? I also it was the beta band. Yeah, when I said the better band, I was thinking, I bet they're called the beta band. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you see, neither of us actually know, no. which I like to think is charming. <laughs> How old are you now, Paul? I am, I've just turned 40. You've just turned 40? You look older. Thank you. <laughs> he does, doesn't he? I always... I always <laughs> That's just because I just turn around and you sort of back yeah, in the air. No, you've had a lot of late nights in your, in your life, I imagine. I've had a few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. OK, let's, um, let's have a track and we'll chat some more about It's All Gone Peep Tong after this. That's a great sound, isn't it? Solomon Burke. So he was Still going. Big fellas, wasn't he? He's an even bigger fella now. Giant fella. He's got hundreds of kids, I think. He'd make a good Doctor Who.
<laughs> yeah. You wouldn't get him in the good Doctor Who. Paul <laughs> Kay would make a good Doctor Who. I'd love to be a Doctor Who. Well, put your name down there. They're looking. Yeah. And then pull out after the first episode of the second don't series. Go, don't start being <laughs> negative about it. I mean, yeah, that was just Christopher's got some issues, I think. That's yeah. what it is, you know? Yeah. He's a time traveller. He wanted to move on. <laughs> that's what it was. It was time to travel. Um, <laughs> Paul Kay is in a new movie which is coming out on May the 27th called It's All Gone Pete Tong, uh, which as I said I haven't seen, but I've heard great things about it, and I'm very much looking forward to it. And it's an intriguing premise. You play a DJ, uh, kind of a, a kind of middling level DJ. Well, yeah, it, it arrives at his peak where he's, I mean, he's the ultimate kind of hedonist on the island. Um, and he starts to lose his hearing, and he, he turns out to be a better DJ when he can't actually listen to the stuff he's playing. Well, when you hear the music that gets played in Ibiza, I can't help but think, you know, as long as you can pick up the rhythms or see what's going on, I guess that's where the, the skill would lie. So it's semi plausible, isn't it? Well, I've got to say, I mean, I, I've certainly, I had earplugs in. To, I thought, why bother acting it? So I, I managed to, to enjoy the clubs a little bit more with impeded hearing, <laughs> and I couldn't hear the director either. So, that so, was great. so did you, you? You had an idea of how it might feel to be hearing impaired to actually yeah, be deaf. Yeah, and, and your balance kind of goes. With Does them. it really? That's yeah. so bizarre. It was scary. So, I mean, to be a manumission surrounded by. Nine and a half thousand pill munching maniacs from Leeds. Yes. Anyway, would be a challenge. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> a, little little bit, a little bit off kilter. And you probably had a, a small uh, aperitif. Um, yeah. No, I didn't. I, I found yeah. it very empowering being yeah. sober in such an environment. A glass of liqueur? Or maybe a, a, a little creme de menthe. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I think creme de menthe is an underrated drink. Me too. <laughs> Especially frappe. Well, you, it's uh, when the, when there's nothing left in the house apart from cooking sherry or creme de menthe. You go for creme de menthe every time. But I used to work in a bar years ago, and very occasionally you'd get someone come in with a lady, and they'd order a creme de menthe frappe, and you'd have to basically, we didn't know how to do it, so you just fill up a tea towel with ice and whack it with a soda siphon. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and I didn't realise you weren't meant to do it in their line of vision. Right. You were meant to go out the back and do it, and then they saw it come out of the old, grotty old tea towel, and you put it in there, pour the frappe in there. Madam? <laughs> a treat for you. you you're a paratif <laughs> um, alright now the last movie I saw Paul Kay in was um, the, I think the last one I saw him was Black Ball I know you've made a few over the last few years yeah um, yeah that was that was the last one a Black that. Ball which was a kind of uh, it was Mel Smith directed it and mm -hmm. it was written by the guy uh, I think his name's Tim something you wrote Calendar Girls Tim Firth Tim Firth uh, and it was fun. It was a, it was a nice. I really enjoyed it. It wasn't what I wanted it to be. It wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. Right. But it had some great performances. I thought you were terrific in it. I thought Johnny Vegas was great in it. Vince Vaughn was very good as well. The story, the structure was a little bit tame. I felt it could have been, you know, uh, stoked up a little bit. Yeah. I think it played it safe. But it was a lovely idea, and I believe it was a true story, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a true story. I, I met the. Uh, I can't remember the chap's name actually, but uh, it certainly made my dad a hero. At his bowls club. He's a it, big bowl. So this bowls was Green player. Crown. Is it Green Crown Bowl? Crown Green Bowl. He, Green he plays for the Finchley Brigade. Right. I don't know what they call He's in the juniors. The which posse, is, probably. The yeah, the Finchley <laughs> posse. He's in the juniors, which is the under 80s. <laughs> I like it. Well, I like the sound of that because as you get older, obviously, you want to be in the juniors. Yeah. Wherever you can. Um, there's, a, there's a place I know, there's a place up uh, just outside of London where they repair old mechanical clocks and automata and Victorian goods like that and I, I have an item like that that we had to get repaired and we sent it back there and someone I went to pick it up for me and he said went in and a very very old man answered the door came in and, and led him in stooped wearing a traditional brown sort of like workman's coat said would you like a cup of tea made him a cup of tea and the bloke came out and it turned out that he was the apprentice <laughs> <laughs> and, and the guy who ran it was in his late days but he was about 75 he was the boy learning the ropes one day this will <laughs> yeah, all be yeah. yours yeah, yeah. yeah he was shuffling around <laughs> he's almost got the hang of it <laughs> but there's some kind of it's quite nice that isn't it knowing that you know, oh it's great I think it's, a, it's something to look forward to in did a you, few years time did you get hooked on bowls yourself when you were doing it uh, I like the smashers you know where you, well, you really whack and, them. yeah I'm not too good on the bendies I like the look of the game, mm. though, and it does look quite... Johnny was great. Johnny Vegas was, was a natural. Yeah, well, it's a kind of northern thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it you're is. You're given that and a love of ferrets in your DNA when you're born. <laughs> um, but it did, it did look kind of, like, exciting to actually play. And the way in the film, the joke they make is that it becomes a kind of Hollywood, almost show-busy kind of thing. And you think, well, maybe they could do that on TV if, yeah. they, if they glossed it up a little bit. Well, the great, I mean, England versus the Aussies at the end was, yeah. was fab. Uh, and, was. Now, now, when a film that comes out and it doesn't do as well for you as you might have hoped, presumably, does that damage your chances getting your next movie or do people just look at your performance and evaluate Well, to be honest, that? it took me a long time to actually get a film and it was what you get into this position where you can't make a film until you've made a film. Yeah. Uh, so it got me started and I think it got me Pete Tong. And and this presumably will lead to even bigger and better things? Yeah, I mean, I had a, I got a little part in the Woody Allen film in the summer, which oh, was really? fantastic. That's the one they shot over here in London, although yeah. his track record these days, it's, frank, you know, it's not really what it was, is it? I haven't seen, I haven't seen the new one. 
Mm. But, uh, oh, he's still... I mean, the fact that he's still making films, he's 70 years old. Yeah, that's pretty good. He hadn't made a film in London since Casino Royale. Oh, wow. And uh, he's there with his little baggy cords and his brogues, and it was just fantastic. He seems to be shrinking, doesn't he? Um, I, well, yeah, he was a bit smaller when I last met him. Yeah, he's a tiny little fella now. He's a bit like the Dormouse in Alice in Wonderland, <laughs> and he just wakes up occasionally. Action. We better get the news. Yeah. Uh, we'll chat to Paul Case more after this. 88 to 91 FM. This is Radio 2 from the BBC. The Buzzcocks. Mm. What a fantastic band. And still going strong. Mm. Or, or strongish. Yeah. Um, Paul Kay is with us. Uh, you will, as I've said before, know him best for his earlier TV work as Dennis Pennis, and then he was in that Millions of Blue Skies thing. Yeah, with Michelle Collins. <laughs> on the TV with Michelle Collins. <laughs> Even people that like it, I can't remember what it's it was, called. That was a strong, what was it called again? 2,000 Acres 8, of Sky? 8,000 Yards of something. Yarn, <laughs> it was a strange old title. What did it actually mean, that? Do you know? <laughs> just <laughs> enormous skyscape. Let's just come up with a really irritating title for the show <laughs> and see if anyone watches, shall we? Um, but that was, uh, how long did that run for? Uh, it ran for a couple of years. Yeah. It was, mm. a, and that was a surprise hit. I would, I thought. I mean, I, not, not, I don't mean that in a, an odd way, but people hadn't seen you acting before. No, that was. My, I, I always think of that as my kind of drama school, really, because yeah. it was. Um, I got the job, didn't expect to get it, and suddenly went off and did the last thing I expected to do after doing Dennis Pennis. But... Had you had you acted before then? I mean, no. I suppose Dennis Pennis was kind of like acting, but well, that was you know, I started did Pennis at thirty, I guess thirty one. And it, the difficulty with Dennis was I didn't know whether I was funny or whether I was any good because I'd never done stand-up, never had any kind of indication of... So it was a, a whole gamble, really, to, yeah. to, to take him on. But I enjoyed that. And, and in terms of the acting, what was the, what was the kind of hardest thing? What was the, where was the learning hump involved there when you actually started filming the series? Did, you, did it come naturally to you or was it... Uh, that, uh, yeah, I, I did feel comfortable in that. I think Perfect World I found difficult. Um, and then, but the, the quality of actors on on Two Thousand Acres was amazing. So really, really, they were carrying you then, really. They certainly <laughs> were. But you see, you're one of those guys because you're likable and you've got charisma in a dishevelled kind of way. With double, <laughs> you can you can breeze through things like that. People are going to forgive you. You know, they just like <laughs> you've got a nice you got it's got, only got a nice face. Yeah, it's got a nice face to look at. That's okay. Thanks, Johnny. Well, not when you smile like that. That'll be scary. <laughs> yeah. But you know, relax. Just relax into your face. Don't don't grimace. Oh. <clears throat> So trying to get a ten-year-old to pose for photographs. Oh, Smile that's normally. Exactly what it's like. Smile normally. I can't now. Stop! It's like a rictus grin. It's like it's he's stuck. a corpse. <laughs> um, so what? Did, now, what do you do with yourself? Because you've had a kind of strange life. Didn't you go off to? You, you went off to um, uh, uh, Russia or something at one stage. You were working a club or something. <laughs> no, I don't. Think so. I remember you doing something. You went off somewhere. You went to Europe somewhere and you did something silly. What I did, did a do? funny old thing in in San Diego. You, no, you decorated a club somewhere. I decorated a club in Tel Aviv, yeah. Well, uh, there you go. Well, <laughs> like, I'm so far wide of the mark. <laughs> There's quite a lot of Russians in Tel Aviv these well, days. Well, all right, there probably are. Well, maybe I'm a little bit mixed up, but but it seems to me like you kind of, you, you sort of wandered through life a little bit. Yes, I did. I dabbled in a lot of things. I, I kind of, I wanted to be a painter. And I th I'm getting more into that now. An I artist think. painter, not an a artist painter, painter. Yeah, not that there's yeah. anything wrong with decorating. It's a nice job. Well, that for that mural you're talking about in this nightclub, it was a, a nightclub in Tel Aviv, and I painted this thing over a month. Um, which I was very proud of, and then and got into an altercation with the guy who ran it. It was the World Cup final in 1994, um, and it all got out of hand. I got thrown out of the club. Hold it, what was the mule? The mule was about the World Cup? No, no, the no. mural was kind of just weird, trippy right. visuals. OK. Um, <laughs> finished it that day, got thrown out that night and broke in and covered it all in blue paint. Oh, well, you see, <laughs> you're not going to make friends that way. No, no I'm not. No. Especially I've grown not, up since then. Especially not in Tel Aviv, I imagine. No. Um, and so what sort of stuff do you paint now, then? You paint for, this is just for relaxation? Relaxation. I keep sketchbooks and, and do little doodles and collages and things. Is it figurative? Is it impressionistic? Is it's it very abstract? sort of, um, it's impressionistic. It's kind of like George Gross, Otto Dix, that oh, kind of Well, they're, they're kind of like odd caricatures. They yeah, they are, them. yeah. So that's what you do, kind of grotesque characters. Grotesque characters with big noses and funny teeth. You've got two looking right at you. <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm feeling inspired. I would be honoured if you would do a small sketch of us before you go. <laughs> okay, you're right. <laughs> we should do that. But I like that because George Grossi's stuff was also quite political. Yeah, wasn't very it? It was, political. And is that what you try and do as well? Um, here and there. I, I'm def I feel like I'm, I'm getting more into politics now. Are you a fan of Egon Schiele? Yeah, I am, yes. Right, I like Although I've kind of go, go off anything you can, you can get on a calendar. 
You it's see, like Regal Sheila you're Cowan's a snob. Not... You're a snob. <laughs> you're a snob. You can't go through life being a snob. Some of the best stuff has been on calendars and chocolate tins. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Victorian painting I used to love called More to be Pitied Than Scorned. You ever seen it? Never seen it. And it's a landlord throwing out a woman and orphan children. It's one of the most powerful pieces of art you'll ever see in your life. <laughs> it's snowing, they've got nowhere to go. Hey, <laughs> and that's been on the calendar, so what? True. Still moves you to tears. Yeah. <laughs> More to be pitied than scorned. <laughs> Uh, what are we going to listen to? Eddie? The Tears. Oh, good. That's The Tears. That's a, that's a great... It's essentially suede, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's Anderson and Butler back <laughs> yeah, together. Yeah, it's suede. <laughs> uh, we're here with scruffy Chancer Paul Kane. <laughs> that's fair. That's a fair... I, think I a like fair that. Description, I'm isn't happy it? with that. <laughs> I'm definitely happy with that. I think we've arrived to that level <laughs> where... Scruffy Chancer. Well, essentially, that's what your charm is. You're a scruffy that's, Chancer. That's exactly what I am, John. Uh, but he's yeah. taken the chances, see? Yeah, so that's he's, good. He's seized them with both yeah. hands and he's made them work. He's made a mural and then ruined it. Yeah, there's a... Somewhere. I took pictures of it first. <laughs> Did he ever scrape off the blue or is it still under the blue paint? Uh, I never went back there. But I, I'll have to say, when I got back, when I got back home, my, my kid, who's now grown up, woke me up. Well, he woke... Um, my uh, mother-in-law up shouting, Daddy's blue, Daddy's blue, and they all thought I was dead. <laughs> <laughs> um, if, ever they, if ever he makes it as an artist, you know, his, mm. his work is esteemed and collected, they'll look back at that as his blue blue period. <laughs> <laughs> you knew that it was coming. It could have killed me. You knew that was coming, didn't you? Um, all right, um, I forgot what was going on. Oh, no, I know. Obviously, we've established, you know, you've done a little bit of this and a little bit of that. A little bit. Okay? You've swerved around. Mm -hmm. Music. I imagine you've been in a band, you've tried that kind of thing. I was in a band called We Are Pleb. We Are Pleb. <laughs> Why did they never make it? Wow. Isn't that weird? Well, we used to get we get, get listed in the enemy as We Are Plob and think, God, we sound ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> well, gonna go what, what sort of period was this and what sort of music was this it? This was kind of 87 to 1990. Oh. We used to say it was anarcho volavon music, but I can't really... What does that mean? I yeah. don't know. But that's a kind of period that was a sort of a slightly difficult period because there was nothing that uh, specific to cling to no. was there I mean it wasn't like it was guitar rock only or it was dance music only you could do any, almost anything it was quite psychedelic Thursday I'd have right. to say okay. um, I was well into them at the yeah, time yeah they were a good band they were great band so great we voice. are pleb and who, who are the other members of we are pleb <laughs> and do we know where they are now one is a, a yachting specialist right. another one the drummer is a maths <laughs> teacher hold it the yachting fellow did he always have a, a yen for the yacht I, I mean, think he it? always had it in yeah. the back yeah. of his mind he had something to fall back on do you think he saw we are pleb as a way to one day owning a lot of I think he did. Yeah, <laughs> so we've got the yachting expert. What did he play? Uh, he was a uh, guitarist. You were vocalist, presumably. I was vocalist. Obviously, Scruffy Chancer. <laughs> not going to bother learning, learning something. Instrument, no. Yeah, I'll sing. <laughs> All right. So yachting, sorry, what was the yachting fella? Uh, he was a guitarist. Oh, good man. The drummer um, became a maths teacher. Oh, fantastic. One day those pictures will surface <laughs> and I want the kids in this class to be delighted. Uh, let me think. The bass player became, uh, I think he's a, a sports journalist. Sports journalist? Well, no. That's kind of, you know, sort of equally chancy. Um, and that, was that it in the lineup? Just the no, there was a keyboard player. Of course. And he's got, he had a, a recording studio called The Magic Hat. Right, so that's what he does. Yeah. So he really actually was the proper musician in the band then. He was, Yeah, yes. he knew what he was doing. See, yes. keyboards, proper instrument. Yeah. Anyone can pick up a guitar. Mm. Two days, you're playing songs. <laughs> it's true, though, isn't it? It's true. And I wish more kids would do it. Yeah, why don't they? Yeah. Now, Paul, what are you doing after this? Uh, it's all gone Pete Tong is out, as we've said, here in the UK on May the 27th. I'm really looking forward to it because, uh, as I said, a friend of mine saw it, he loved it, and I wish I'd got to see it. And unfortunately, they've taken the video back. They lent me, <laughs> they lent me the video for two hours. Said, so you can watch it, you can have it for two hours. What am I going to do with it? Here's the thing, Paul. Who's going to pirate a film called It's All Gone Pete Tong? And also, what, me, I'm not going to pirate a movie. I've got enough money. If I was going to pirate a movie, I'd pirate Tom Cruise's next film. Anyway, that's. Forgive me. Yeah, I'm just a bit angry no, that's to fine. see it. Um, that's out May the 27th. I suspect it will do very well for you here in the UK and I hope around the rest of the, the world. Um, what are you doing next, though? Do you have another film? Like no, that, no, nothing on. I'm waiting to find something that uh, turns up and I can chance it. Nothing, nothing going right now? That's <laughs> nothing, no. Do you have enough money? You OK? You sort of, you, yes, you yeah. can muddle through the sort summer? Of, right. Sort of, sort of. Because, you know, I could always do with a bit of mule, mule work. <laughs> oh, if you want a mule, I'll live around the corner from you. Do you do, would you yeah, do a mule for I could, me? I could turn your bedroom into a sort of Arabian palace. I don't think I want the bedroom touch, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> why, don't, actually, why don't we start down at the end of the garden, see how we get on, right? If we like it, we'll bring it into the bedroom. OK. All right. Um, no, well, let's talk about that. Yeah, no, I'm up for that. Yeah, let's do 
it. I'd yeah. love it. A, a big picture of Andy down in the garden to scare off burglars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Something for the sheep to look yeah. at. Yeah. Dressed as an owl. <laughs> uh, Paul, how lovely to see you again. Thank you so much for coming in. As I said, I'll say it one more time. It's all gone. Pete Tong, that's the film. It's out May the 27th. And uh, Pennies from Heaven, the Dennis Pennies collection, is out from BBC DVD right now. Very, very funny indeed. Uh, you know, and if you, if you haven't seen it, if you've got kids who've grown up watching Dom Jolly or they like um, Arid Mary and that kind of stuff, go back to the original. Mm -hmm. There you go, Dennis Pennies. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for having me. Bye.